To the government and to big business, people are cash cows and taxable objects. Our importance is measured by how productive we are, how much we spend, how much we can be taxed, and which way we vote. Our happiness is not on the list. When you appreciate that this is how we're seen, you'll understand where feminism came from and why it has so much support from government. They want women in the workplace, and they'll use every method that they can, including lying about men and making women feel oppressed by men. Women are not going to go back in the box. They're out, and they're going to be playing an even greater role in society than, than they do presently. The best way to get people to do what you want is to make them feel that they're doing it for themselves. Women have begun to find out that feminism is not about women can do this, women can do that. It's about women have to do this and have to do that. Women's choices in life are becoming as narrow as men's. Why are women so depressed at the moment? Because they appear to be, I mean, why is that? Why would they be so depressed about things? Well, because of the corporate world. They've discovered that it's shit. There were those of us who were telling them in the 60s that life in the boardroom was probably even less rewarding than life in the kitchen sink. And they found that out. And they found out what a hostile and nasty environment it is to live in and work in. They found that the pressures are inhuman. If we follow the money trail, all we have to ask is who really wins because of feminism? Who are the big winners by having women fighting to be in the workplace? Let's look at some of the suspects. The government strongly supports feminism. Putting women to work creates much larger tax revenues and enables them to grow massively with departments for women, equal opportunities commissions and increased legislation. Feminism has enabled the housing market to more than double the legitimate cost of a home for the sake of more profit. By no stretch of the imagination should a flat in Barnet cost this much. But it does because feminism has created a situation where women are working and earning like men. Basic economics tells us that a house can only be priced at a level a household can afford. House prices can be massively and artificially inflated because there are now two people to take money from rather than just one. Estate agents' percentage fees are therefore more than doubled by feminism and it's the same for landowners, and the government gets larger stamp duty payments and higher capital gains taxes as well. Banks now have the profitable luxury of being able to lend against two wage earners when they dole out mortgages. Because of inflated house prices, they more than double their profits. They also increase their security, because there are now two people to chase for the money. Because of feminism and a mythical independent woman, women have been buying more cars. More cars, in fact, than men buy. Feminism has been a godsend to car makers. Indeed, the boss of Toyota once said, Independent women can now buy many more of their own clothes, and still get clothes bought for them by men. Not bad at all. The list of winners from feminism goes on, but those not on the list, however, are men, women and children. They all lose. Did we need feminism? And some of the roles were, were fairly settled. I think the, 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 they're much more amorphous now, much more difficult. Um, and, I mean, a lot of it's, I mean, I'm not saying I'm opposed to it. I mean, I'm not opposed to the changes. I mean, I think we did need sex equality. I think to have a society in which you have the men being all the macho and women embodying all the, the finer things in life, it's a mistake. Are you saying that there was a need for feminism in the 70s, 60s? Absolutely, yeah. There's probably always going to be a need um, for anything to keep a balance there. Um, what we're seeking to do in mankind, in fact, is to work with women because I don't disagree with feminism in terms of equality for women. Um, all I would counter that is it's got to be equality for men and women and at any time that anything that is put on the statute books it, it should be looked in a balanced way from the male and the female perspective. Um, at the moment we have a women in equality unit where everything that goes on the statute book is looked at it but only from a female perspective. Now if you keep doing that with all of your laws eventually you're going to get everything so that it's, it, it all goes one way and that's not right. Whilst he's undoubtedly correct about bias in the law against men due to feminism, I disagree that feminism was ever needed to address an imbalance between the sexes. The pendulum analogy for the position of men and women before and after feminism is that things have gone too far in women's favour in recent times. The pendulum has swung too far. But I think the reality is somewhat different. There is no pendulum. This is really another method used to promote the false idea that men have had their time of having it good and now it's women's turn. I hope to show you that this idea is entirely wrong. We need to feminism like a hole in the head.